Hi everybody, welcome back to Coder Dave, where we talk about DevOps, especially with GitHub and Azure DevOps. Today I have for you a special video because this is an introduction, a very quick introduction to CI/CD, and I will also talk about how we do CI/CD within GitHub. The presentation has been recorded live to an event I recently delivered, so this will be a more general conversation about CI/CD. Before we start with the presentation though, remember to like this video if you find it insightful or helpful so more people can benefit from it. And if you are into DevOps, remember to subscribe to this channel so you can have more videos like this. But I hope you enjoyed this video, let's go into it. Just a very, very, you know, um, general view about CI/CD. This is a, uh, basically the process of moving your code from ideation to coding all the way to, to production. We have the CI part, which basically is continuous integration. And that's the process to, um, to, to implement to the build of your code, the testing of your code, possibly some security scanning of your code itself, and eventually packaging the, the application, enabling in the end the user to change, uh, to see the changes break if actually they have to break. So if they're, they've done something wrong, the CI part highlight that in your development environment or in before even reaching your development environment. And then the CD part, the continuous deployment or continuous delivery is you know, the part covering the deployment of your, of your bits of application in the different environments, implementing more security testing in that point uh, to the application itself rather than to the code um, and so on and so forth. So. How do we do CI CD in GitHub and how we advocate to use uh, these processes? Well, we use something that we call uh, GitHub Flow, not to be com confused with Git Flow, which is completely different. Whenever we start uh, implementing a new feature or a new change, we would create a feature branch for that. We do all the work in the feature branch. And when that's ready, um, we open up a request. We open up a request, we have discussion and code review, and possibly, you know, we change things that has to be changed and, and, and whatnot. The CI give us the results. So uh, if there's anything to fix based on tests, based on security tests and so on and so forth, we do that inside the feature branch itself. So we make sure the code is safe and basically deployable. And then we ship directly, we deploy directly from the feature branch. Um, in other instances, you, may want to integrate to, to, to the main branch first and have your main as source of deployment that depend on the strategy. You know, if anything goes, goes wrong, we can go just back and redeploy from, from main and have everything fixed. And we merge to the main branch only after deployment. Our main branch is basically the latest version of production that is working. So as I said before, if anything um, should happen, we can always you know, take main and deploy it back and uh, without causing any, any problem. I want to stress that we don't ship code that is not you know, thoroughly reviewed and test and, and so on and so forth, or it is not passing all the automated tests. So this is why we, we do this directly from the feature branch. This is a quote from Martin Fowell uh, saying that continuous integration basically is the practice where members of the team integrate their work frequently. Um, and usually each person integrates at least daily I think this is slightly updated, uh, sorry, outdated. We try to do that as frequent as possible. In my opinion, doing it only daily, it's not sufficient anymore, but you know, it of course depends on the kind of software you're doing, the, the size of team you have and, and so on and so forth. Benefits of CI, as I'm sure you, you all know, is the code is basically always in deployable state. And this is because of the testing, because of the building, because of the code review and so on and so forth. And the CI itself or having the code in deployable state should always be prioritized over working on a new feature. It's useless continue working on a new feature if basically that feature doesn't work and breaks the, the, the code on main, right? We want to fix that first. We want to be able to deploy at any point in time and then we keep working on new features. We want to have a feedback on our code, on our production as soon as possible. We want to break things if we have to, as soon as possible, obviously before reaching production. And this is why CI is very important. If you have all of these you know, done correctly, then deployments um, are just a business decision. It's not a technical decision because you know that if business wants to deploy now or wants to deploy 
in an hour or an hour ago, you always have something that is working, that is deployable, and that will not break production. All right, so continuous delivery, um, it's sort of umbrella term for basically both CI and CD um, to describe the, the practice of building software and um, make the, the software releasable to production at any time. And the release part, of course, is taken care um, of by the continuous deployment kind of practice, which complements the continuous integration in the sense that whenever a continuous integration is performed, whenever a, an artifact is available, that will be or may be uh, deployed to one or more environments. Usually, um, it's a good idea to have it deployed at least to dev in, a, in an automated way. I know there is a bit of resistance for that. In my experience, there's not many enterprise clients that are willing or they, they have the processes in place to be able to continuously deploy to production. Uh, but I hope that we will get there um, soon. <laughs>